the uh, uh, so so the kinds of uh, 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 leverage that you might hope for in these extraordinarily uh, poor and, and isolated communities, I think, are a problem. Which which leads me, I think, to the the issue of regionalism that you know, we've 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 left for a while, but but I think we we need to return to. At some point, the residents of these communities uh, need to have access to the job growth that is taking place. We are not going to be able to steer the market entirely so that suddenly we've got 2,000, 5,000 uh, jobs moving right smack in the middle of the inner city. Uh, what we are going to have to do is make those jobs accessible to inner city residents and to allow them to exercise some housing choices uh, in the metropolitan region. And, and along those lines, you know, it was interesting, last week I had a meeting where the Civic Committee of the Commercial Club, which is the major uh, uh, corporate uh, organization in Chicago, all, all the CEOs and, and top leaders actually uh, have been working over the last year on what they call a metropolis project, uh, where they've actually put together a fairly bold package of proposals to deal with the regionalism issue. Uh, examples, uh, they've, you've, you've got corporate CEOs who are actually proposing that land use uh, restrictions and zoning ordinance powers be taken away or at least restricted uh, in, in ways that uh, prevent affordable housing from going into uh, some of these outer ring suburbs. Uh, there's been talk about uh, uh, revenue tax base sharing, uh, which you know, is a pretty radical concept for uh, corporate uh, leaders to, to get behind. And I think uh, that indicates a recognition, at least at the top of the corporate ladder, that there is some genuine need to think regionally and to plan regionally and to open up these communities. Now, whether they're willing to uh, fight the good fight and battle some of the extraordinarily political resistance that I think we're all accustomed to when you start talking about transportation infrastructure and land use and, and affordable housing uh, remains to be seen. It, it just uh, an, an interesting little sideline uh, at this retreat, uh, the Speaker of the Illinois House was present uh, and uh, he was listening very intently to all these various proposals and uh, uh, they asked him to comment and he said, uh, it sounds Soviet. Uh, which, uh, which I think indicates that there is going to be some political resistance uh, to, uh, to, to some of these proposals. I mean, there, it seems to me there are three bases for, for regional cooperation. One of them is environmental. Um, and so there are many people um, in, uh, in the suburbs who care about the loss of green space. And there is common interest between those people who care about urban investment and those people who worry about the loss of, the loss of uh, farmland or worry about the development patterns in the suburbs. That means that environmentalists are now discovering that cities and towns are their best friend, right? So that's one basis. The second is around labor. The, the, the demand and the supply of labor have got common interest, especially in a good economy. And the third would be the Orfield you know, coalition, um, the inner ring suburbs and rural areas in the state and the city who think that the uh, way that we go about raising money for public goods doesn't work, particularly around school, uh, around school issues. The, that's the basis for a coalition, it seems to me, to kind of rethink, um, uh, rethink a regionalism. The problem, of course, is that um, the, the, the uh, economic unit, you know, the city-state um, uh, that uh, we talked about, doesn't correspond, obviously, to administrative units. It doesn't correspond to the small administrative units, you know, the municipalities. It doesn't correspond to, you know, I'm in a region with three different states. Region in, in the regional marketplace of Philadelphia means a piece of New Jersey, a piece of Pennsylvania, and a piece of Delaware. You think that they're in that regional market coordinating welfare reform, right? And, and the devolution of money from, this, from the federal government to the state doesn't address that. So unless you put the right sort of incentives, either from federal policy or from state policy down, for cooperation, then you're going to have the problem of administrative balkanization, unless you can get around that by one of these three tags of mutual self-interest. Mm -hmm. right. I'd say uh, public policy that incentiv incentivizes regional cooperation is critical. Um, I think Washington, in the whatever the next generation of uh, urban uh, policy is, uh, has really got to think about that. Um, and it's got to think about um, uh, policy devolution from that perspective. Um, the other thing that strikes me just listening to, 
my colleagues here is um, that we're in a there's an interesting possibility um, for change and that that possibility uh, hasn't just to do with um, the, the possibilities of the economy but it has to do with some change in political culture um, and um, some realization that to rebuild uh, cities means to to make them into marketplaces where people with choice want to be um, and so it seems to me that what uh, I come come away from in this panel hopeful is that that's a that's a uh, an important value an important realization uh, right now well uh, I, I would echo what what uh, Jeremy just said I, I let me give you some specific areas where I think the federal government has to be a little more thoughtful uh, I, I think uh, the whole issue of public housing and how that's dealt with uh, is going to be absolutely critical uh, I think in, in, in charting a uh, a, a direction for, for big cities like uh, Chicago, but I'm assuming also me medium-sized cities uh, and particular neighborhoods as well. Um, and I think that for the federal government to uh, think about how do we encourage mixed income communities, uh, how do we encourage uh, and prod to some degree local governments to make sure that we don't just have mixed income communities in African American neighborhoods within the city, but we also have mixed income communities that also are mixed race communities uh, beyond the city's borders, I think are, is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, transportation access, uh, and, and so uh, a, a thoughtful uh, federal policy, you know, when I look at, what was it, $200 billion uh, recently uh, going, going uh, across the country, uh, how much actual thinking there was there about are we uh, encouraging the kinds of regional approaches and are, are we facilitating access of, of, of the workforce uh, to, the, to the job growth that exists. I think uh, uh, that's absolutely critical. Um, it, two other things I guess I'd mention. One is uh, uh, as important as access is just transportation to these jobs. I think there is still some work to be done uh, uh, in anti-discrimination laws in, in, in employment. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking now as a civil rights attorney. I think there's so much focus typically on uh, affirmative action as a policy issue and not enough focus on the fact that uh, if you go out into many of these uh, outer ring suburbs or inner ring suburbs in the city of Chicago and you walk into these gleaming office buildings on the way to O'Hare Airport uh, in a metropolitan area that is 50 to 60 percent minority, you will maybe see two minorities in an entire office building. Uh, stunning. Uh, and some of that is issues of access and transportation, but some of it is uh, uh, more straightforward issues of discrimination, and I think we have to talk about that. Uh, and and the, the, the third area, uh, the, the final area, rather, that I, I just mentioned, uh, I think that in terms of workforce preparation, the federal government can, can do a good job lifting up be best standards of, of organizations that are training people, folks affected. Uh, but at some point, I think, uh, an examination of at least targeted job programs that allow people to get an initial entry uh, into the job market and then can transition into the private economy, I, I still think is something that we may have to look at in, in very poor communities like some of the ones I represent.